you need a spiritual guide on the inner path of self-transformation. You do need a spiritual guide, a sheikh, a guru in Hindu tradition, if you want to journey on the inner path of self-transformation. This is a requirement. In today's day and world, um, we have a situation where so many millions, if not billions of people want to figure out spirituality by themselves. This is not possible uh, to reach any level of inner transformation by trying to figure out spirituality by ourselves. We tend to read a lot and we tend to listen to different types of sources and put it all together. This is all good and it can increase our knowledge, ilm, but it will not lead to a proper inner transformation on the inner spiritual path. In this path, a sheikh is necessary. The concept of a master teacher is universal and you will find this in every spiritual tradition. The master teacher is older than time itself. In the Hindu traditions they have the Guru, they have Swami, so many different titles for the spiritual guide, Guruji, uh, Swami, Sri, etc. It is found in Hinduism. In Buddhism you have the same thing. The Tibetan Buddhists have their Lama, Dalai Lama, for example. Hmm? And all of the temples have the master teacher, the Zen master. Hmm? In Christianity, the spiritual guide was originally meant to be the priest, the bishop, or the highest, which is basically the Pope. So even in Christianity, you have uh, a spiritual guide. In Islam, you have the Imam and the Sheikh. The Sheikh specifically is a guide for the spiritual path. Today, in the Muslim Ummah, because of the influence of Wahhabism and Salafism, we have removed a very important Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is the Sunnah of the spiritual guide. Because the Quran says, O you who believe, obey Allah, obey His Messenger, and obey your rightly guided leaders. Hmm? And usually today what you see is the first two uh, in the Muslim Ummat. Some people like to obey only Allah. Oh, I understand Allah according to my own understanding. MashaAllah. We don't know Allah. So how can we know Allah? How can we know that what we imagine is Allah and not that from our own imagination? Mm. But basically this type of I follow God according to my own will, well that's obeying Allah. But the Quran said, obey Allah, obey his messenger. Rasulullah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So now you are following Allah or God according to the teaching of a perfectly enlightened human being which we know as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, obey Allah, obey his messenger. But the last one is where many, many, many Muslims today fail because of the influence of Wahhabism and Salafism that wants to detach the Muslims from their spiritual guides. And this is the obeying those among you in authority, one translation. Your rightly guided leaders, another translation. You need not just to obey Prophet Muhammad's teaching according to your own intellectual understanding. We cannot simply study ourselves to being pious people. It is not possible. I can read hadiths after hadiths after hadiths. It's one thing to understand a hadith in your mind and another thing to live the Quran in reality. Live the hadiths, live the sunnah of Rasulullah in reality. And when you follow a rightly guided leader, you will know what Quran and Sunnah means in real life. And living Quran and Sunnah in real life is very different from living it according to an intellectual understanding of what Quran and Sunnah is. Hmm? So the rightly guided leader, which is the awliya, and their sheikhs that represents the awliya, the saints, they are the ones for us to follow. And this was so in the, uh, uh, the ancient Muslim world before the emergence of Abdul Wahab. That's why you can go everywhere from Bangladesh, India, Iraq, all the way to North Africa, West Africa, and find shrines of the awliya, shrines of the great saints. But now they have been burning those shrines and, and removing those shrines because of, because of ignorance. Yeah, Imam Al-Jazali, Al-Jazuli, Ibn Arabi. Some don't agree with Ibn Arabi. You have Sheikh Hassan Sadili. 
Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, you have so many. Sheikh Ahmed Tijani, etc. Mm. So these are the ones that teach us how to live the Sunnah of Rasulullah in practice, not just according to our imagination. Also, uh, to take bayah, which is initiation into a Sufi order, is a sunnah of Rasulullah Because Prophet Muhammad, he had spiritual disciples. You can read in the books of Hadith, there, there is this book called the Book of Bayah, where you can read how uh, disciples took initiation with Prophet Muhammad which makes him basically their sheikh. He's Nabi, he's Rasulullah, but he functioned as a sheikh to those disciples. And then after Prophet left his body, they took Bayah with uh, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, then with Umar, then with Usman, then with Hazrat Ali. So following a, a tradition, a lineage that follows this is a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And this was practiced all over the Muslim world. And the Wahhabi Salafi fitna has removed that. So basically now uh, in the Ummat we have this, I'm going to interpret Quran and Hadith as, according to my own intellect, which is the same as as the deen of the nafs, the deen of the mind, the deen of the self. It is not the right path. No. So, we need a spiritual teacher on the path. It is not possible to do deep spiritual inner progress to transform ourselves uh, without a, a teacher. And I just briefly want to touch on the seven maqams of the nafs. This is a universal teaching that you will find in all tariqah. Many modern teachers say that there are three levels of the nafs. Nafs amara, nafs lawama, nafs al mutmainna. This is partly true. There are in total seven levels. The reason why they don't go through all the seven is because reaching the higher levels actually requires an authentic tariqah. And for most people, it is enough just to go for nafs al mutmainna or the self that is at peace. So basically, that's the maqam of inner peace. Okay. So, just briefly. The first level, nafs al-amara, is mentioned in the Quran, verse 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 53, the self prone to evil. The person in nafs amara is basically a kafir, someone who has no consciousness of themselves, they have no ability to see themselves, they are never wrong, they are always right. Everything is someone else's fault. Everything is someone else's fault in, in this, in this state. They have no concept of right and wrong, no ability to see when they do right and wrong. That's the first level. The second level is nafs, al, nafs lawama, which is, you can say, spiritual awakening. When there is a light in the heart that is lit, that starts giving us the ability to see ourselves. So we become self-blaming, which is why in the Quran, chapter 75, verse 2, nafs lawama is referred to as the self uh, blaming self because when the, this light is lit that we start seeing ourselves we go from amara to lawama we see our deeds we see what we have done and we feel bad and we want to repent and this is why most sufi orders have the first maqam is a tawbah or repentance because when we get to nafs lawama we start blaming ourselves for all the bad actions and we want to become better people which is usually why the first dhikr that you will get is istighfar or astaghfirullah astaghfirullah maybe 70,000 times or something like this when you enter tariqah because this is when this, the self transitions from amara to lawama now nas amara, nas lawama the difference is that the person can see their deeds but in nafs amara and nafs lawama, there is no inner jihad. The jihad al nafs does not exist yet. So the person is not actively struggling against their bad character traits in nafs lawama. This happens at the third level, which is nafs uh, mulhima. And in this level, the self, uh, you are doing inner jihad. You are fighting your bad character traits, you're fighting your anger, you're fighting your greed, you're fighting your lust, you're fighting your bad habits, you're fighting your laziness. You are trying to be a better person and then you fail and you repent and then you try more and fail and repent. There's this inner jihad going on in the third level. Now, going from the third level to the fourth level is, according to our teacher, the most hardest to do and that takes the longest time and takes the most effort. The fourth level is nafs al-mutma'inna, which is the self at peace. 
So going from an inner struggle, nafs al-mulhima, to nafs al-mutma'inna, inner peace. That is the hardest. Because going from the third level to the fourth level requires that you defeat the following four enemies. Nafs, hawa, dunya, shaitan. Nafs, hawa, dunya, shaitan. You need to defeat yourself, your ego, your individualized sense of self. I want this, I want that. I am this nationality, I am this gender, I am this ideology. You need to defeat this individual will, the ego, the self, to reach inner peace. You also need to defeat Hawa, the passions and desires. Instagram, what, what has someone posted? Ah, oh, that's a beautiful woman. Ah, oh, that's a handsome man. The passions and desires that we have. Oh, I feel like eating candy. I feel like smoking. I feel like drinking alcohol, etc. This is Hawa. This needs to be defeated. The dunya, the material world, the physical world, is not an easy enemy to defeat. So much happens. Work, family, life. How do I balance all of this? Because all of this is stress. If you don't defeat the material world and all of its demands on you, you cannot reach a state of inner peace. So dunya is very difficult to defeat. And the enemy, the fourth enemy, is shaitan. And maybe shaitan might be the most difficult enemy to defeat. Some say shaitan is most difficult. Some say the nafs is most difficult. Shaitan. To defeat your jealousy. I'm not jealous. We all have a little bit of jealousy in us. Defeat your pride. I'm not proud. We all have a little bit of pride in us. Defeat jealousy, anger, pride, arrogance. We think we know the best. When someone else is succeeding, we feel bitterness against that person. When someone else is being happy, we feel jealous at that person. Defeating this jealousy is not easy. It's not easy to defeat shaitan. And this is why you can never make spiritual progress on the inner path without a proper teacher. A sheikh in our tradition, known as Guru, Swami, Lama in other traditions, you cannot because you cannot defeat shaitan without a sheikh. It is not possible. It doesn't matter if you are a Hafiz of Quran, you have memorized the Quran, you are a scholar of Hadith, you are Muhaddith, a scholar of Hadith and you know perfect Arabic and so on. You know why it doesn't matter? Shaitan, a'udhu billahi min shaitan regime, is a scholar. There was nobody who had no more ilm, more knowledge than the shaitan. Shaitan had so much knowledge, he was teaching all of the angels and how to pray. Hmm? And so on. And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Shaitan to bow down to Adam, Shaitan refused because he's arrogant. He thinks he is better than Adam. So he became the rejected one. Iblis became the rejected one, or Shaitan. Audu billahi minna shaitan regime. Because he was arrogant. His knowledge made him arrogant. And this is something in my own experience I've seen almost universally today. Not universal, but very common. We study a lot of uh, Islam, we listen to this mufti, this uh, scholar, and then we think we know Allah and we think we are very righteous and we think we are better than other people. And this is nothing but a manifestation of the same pride that refused to bow down to Adam. This is the pride of shaitan. So defeating these four enemies are required. You will not have true inner peace before you have conquered your jealousy, your anger, your hatred, your pride, your arrogance. It is not possible. You will not have inner peace, true inner peace, before you have conquered your lusts and passions, iPhone, women, men, uh, eating candy, smoking, etc. You will not have that. Before you have conquered this world, work, stress, paying bills, children, marriage, etc. Before you have conquered that, you will not have inner peace. And you will not have inner peace before you have conquered your sense of self, this identity. I am this, I am that. It will not happen. And this requires a shake with spiritual practices. When those four enemies are conquered in the tariqah, your self can enter into the fourth level, which is nafs al mutma'inna, which is inner peace. Peace, tranquility, true Islam. Spiritual Islam, which comes from salam, which means peace. You are experiencing salam around you. Now, salam alaikum is a reality. Hmm? Now, Muslim, the word Muslim, Musalam, someone who has salam, someone who has peace, is a reality. Now, the deen of Islam is a reality. 
It's not just talk. It's not just an identity that is stuck on the ego. It is a reality. Nasal Mutma'ina, known as Tumani'ina. The Tijanis, under the leadership of Sheikh Ibrahim Nasr anhu, says that the third level of Iman is Tumani'ina, which is the same thing. Your Iman, your inner face is completed when you reach this level of inner peace or tranquility. Nafsal Mutma'ina, myself, I'm working very hard to solidify and, and, and come properly into the maqam of Nafsal Mutma'ina. After that comes Nafsal Rabdiya. This is a state of inner peace where you are happy with Allah. So a person in Nafsal Rabdiya is so detached from this world that they lose a job, they say Alhamdulillah. They miss a plane, they say Alhamdulillah. Any calamity that hits them, they say Alhamdulillah. Anything good that hits them, they say Alhamdulillah, because everything comes from Allah. There is no, I like this, I don't like this anymore, because the self is so defeated here, I'm just happy with everything. Nasal Radia. After that comes Nasal Mardia, which is when Allah is happy with you. It's one thing to be happy with Allah, it's another thing also when Allah is happy at you. Now we are talking about this kind of extremely high maqams. We are talking about very high shaykhs who have their duas answered this level. When, you, when Allah is happy with you, you can, with your intention, you can will things into existence, inshallah, because Allah can do everything. And then you have the seventh level, nafs al-kamal, the perfected self. This level is the maqam of insan al-kamil. This is the perfected human being. When you have entered nafs, nafs kamal, your self is perfected, you are enlightened. There are very few people who are in nafs kamal. We are talking about the grand sheikhs here. We are talking about the awliya. Uh, I will give a few examples. I will give three examples of, some, of, of, of sheikhs who have entered this seventh level of the self and this is narrated to me by sheikhs, by people who have higher maqam than myself. Maulana Sheikh Nazim al Hakani of Naqshbandi Tariqa, he was a perfected self. Sheikh Ibrahim Nias of Tijani Tariqa, he was a perfected self. Serin Saliu of Muridiya Tariqa was a perfected self. And all of the founders of the Tariqa, Sheikh Ahmed Tijani, Sheikh Ahmad Ubamba, Sheikh Ibra Fall, Sheikh Hassan Shadli, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, they are all in Samuel Kamil, they are all on the seventh level of the self. These beings have no negative character traits. They are pure love, pure light. When they speak, Allah speaks. It is Allah that speaks through them. Because their self is so gone that when they speak, it is Allah that speaks. So when they teach something 300 years ago, we study it today as it is 100% true. Because it is not from a self. It is from Allah. They are perfected beings. This is the seven uh, levels of the self. So getting from the third to the fourth level is the hardest. And defeating the four enemies without a shake is not possible. And it needs to be an authentic shake that has conferred practices that is given by one of the, the, the saints on the seventh level. That have that authenticity and power that can take you in a proper inner transformation. And the problem today in the spiritual community is that when we listen to different teachers that inspire us, we have to always ask ourselves, where is he guiding me? What is the destination of his teaching? If he says he's a sheikh or in another tradition a guru, have to know where is he guiding you? Is he guiding me to inner peace? Nafs al Is he guiding me to perfect enlightenment or nafs al kamil? Is he guiding me somewhere else? Because many of the contemporary Islamic teachers are only guiding people to get more knowledge. They increase the quantity of ilm. And this is not the same as inner transformation. Because ilm can actually uh, destroy our Islam. It can make us more arrogant and, and make us manifest even more of these shaitanic attributes. That now that we have got ilm, we think that we are better than our brother, or better than our sister, so we walk with our head high. This is shaitan, audu billah. So, this is not progress if it makes us arrogant or display negative character traits. Now, inner path is self-transformation. Hopefully, this video has been helpful. I intend to go through the seven 
levels of the self more in detail in another video in the future inshallah the intention of this video was to answer what is a spiritual teacher a guide why is it necessary hopefully this is helpful assalamu alaikum